Welcome everyone to this lecture by Learn Civil Engineering, where we will be learning about the standard atmospheric pressure, which is the pressure relative to a free surface, and we will end with an example problem where we will apply the theory we have learnt. When exposed to the atmosphere, a body of liquid will form a horizontal free surface. The liquid's pressure at any point on the free surface is equal to the local pressure of the atmosphere. In practice, the atmosphere is in constant motion and exhibits variations in pressure and temperature, which depend on local meteorological conditions. In general, changes in mean atmospheric conditions occur over long time scales, typically hours or even days, and over large spatial scales, which is over many kilometres. This latter point is well illustrated by this map of mean atmospheric pressure over the North Atlantic. To give you an idea of spatial scale, the length of the British Isles from north to south is approximately 1,100 kilometres. On this map, the white lines show isobars, or pressure contours, which are just lines of constant pressure, and the numbers correspond to measured values of the mean atmospheric pressure in units of millibars, or m-bars where 1 m bar is equal to 100 newtons per meter squared. The map shows that spatial variations in atmospheric pressure are typically very small. For example, the difference between the region of high pressure here at 1020 m bar and the low pressure region here at 996 m bar is 24 m bar, which is at most a difference of 2.4%. Therefore, for any applications in civil engineering, we can assume that the local atmospheric pressure remains approximately constant and therefore adopt a standard atmospheric pressure value which we denote Pa and which is typically taken to be Pa equals 101,325 newtons per meter squared which is equal to 1,013.25 m bar. For the rest of this series on hydraulic design, and in common practice, we will use the approximate value Pa is equal to 101 kilonewtons per meter squared. The value of standard atmospheric pressure, Pa, has also been adopted as a standard unit for pressure, known as the standard atmosphere, denoted ATM, and defined as 1 ATM is equal to 101,325 newtons per meter squared. The value for standard atmosphere is typically used when analysing or calculating pressure at different depths within oceans, seas and deep lakes. For bodies of liquid with a free surface that is exposed to the atmosphere, when integrating the hydrostatic pressure equation dp by dz equals minus rho g, as defined in the previous video, under these conditions we use the pressure at the free surface, Pa, as our boundary condition. That is, we use P equals Pa at Z equals H0, where H0 is the elevation of the free surface. We will see how this is applied in the following example. So let's have a look at an example problem where we can apply this theory we have just learnt. A reservoir of uniform depth H0 contains liquid of constant density ρ. Find the pressure distribution within the liquid in terms of the vertical height Z, where Z equals 0 is at the base of the reservoir. And then, if H0 equals 10 meters and ρ equals 1000 kilograms per meter cubed, find the pressure at the mid depth. Pause the video here and see if you can apply the theory learnt previously to solve this problem. Now that you've had a chance to attempt it, let's work through the problem. Here we will use the hydrostatic pressure equation dp over dz is equal to minus rho g, with p equals pa at z equals h0, or in other words, at the height in the reservoir of the free surface, the pressure is equal to the standard atmospheric pressure. Now, integrating both sides of the hydrostatic pressure equation with respect to Z, we get the pressure at the point Z is equal to minus rho GZ plus some constant K. 
Applying the free surface boundary condition of P equals PA at Z equals H naught gives PA equals K minus rho G H naught. And then rearranging for K, we get K equals PA plus rho G H naught. Then substituting for K gives the expression for the pressure distribution of P at a height of Z is equal to PA plus rho g times by h naught minus z, which is valid for z is greater than or equal to zero and z is less than or equal to h naught. It is good practice to give a range of validity for p, which will be especially useful in more complicated examples and when we learn how to calculate boundary forces due to static pressure in the future. Having derived the pressure distribution within the liquid in terms of the vertical height z, we can now use the pressure distribution to find the pressure at the mid depth when h naught equals 10 meters, rho equals 1000 kilograms per meter cubed, pa equals 101 kilopascals, and z equals h naught over 2, which is equal to 5, to give p equals 101 times 10 to the power of 3 plus 9.81 times 1000 times by 10 minus 5, which is equal to 150 kilopascals. There is the answer for the example problem then, and well done if you got that correct. If not, then hopefully now that we've worked through it together, you understand the solution a bit better. This has been a lecture by Learn Civil Engineering. If you have found this lecture useful at all, please show support by subscribing to the channel and leaving a like on the video. If you do have any remaining questions or would like me to cover a specific topic, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll try to respond as soon as possible. Thank you for watching.